church you are. Thank you so much, musicians, singers. Thank you. So proud of every single one of them. Can you imagine? Most of them, like even saw me was little. All I remember, they were just little chubby little babies. And now they are serving God in the house. Together with the parents now. Even Stella and Krishna, they are stepping up and they are serving God with the Pakistani refugee uh, food bank. And every single one of you, I believe most, I think 80%, 90% of you are all serving. Every single one of you are serving. So no, I don't think anyone can sit in this church and not do anything because this is family, amen? And family, we are responsible for each other. And if you are new here, we want you to be, if you're going to choose this church to be your church, then we also are expecting you to be part of everything that is happening, that you enjoy the life that's happening in this house of God. Amen. Wow, why everybody is fascinated with that picture, is it? That's me, okay? <laughs> Wish I, I should have dressed up like that today and come. Spiritual warfare, don't be... Not too quick yet, not too fast, but uh, I just want to make a special announcement huh, concerning Sarian Niati. Uh, next week, we have a very special lady, Reverend Dr. Uh, Sarian Niati, who's going to come. Okay, this, and uh, with her husband, Colin, uh, they're from Zimbabwe, but, you know, they are an incredible couple. Uh, not only are they pastors, they are uh, pastor of this church called Harvest House International, uh, I've been to the church. Do you know the one that I was invited to att- uh, to preach for their women's conference, which is called, um, they call it the Maximized Lifestyle International, which is a women's conference. And, uh, and it was so incredible, incredible, you know. I didn't know that they are pastors of this like large church of almost close to 12,000. And they run, I think, 10 services uh, in their own church, and they hold almost 50 community churches in Bulawayo itself. Can you imagine? And through their movement, they planted like 270-odd churches worldwide. Huh? Not just in Africa nations, but uh, also in UK and Asia Pacific, all sorts of things that they've been doing. And it's a very, very incredible couple. And uh, she herself not just has credentials uh, as in Bible theology and all that and building this great movement. She also is very renowned uh, personality in the country, uh, making reforms, changes in the business world as well as in the social world, uh, as well as in, I think, environment sort of thing, huh? Uh, Recycling waste and things like that. Fantastic couple. And next week, you're going to have her speak because they're coming for, they didn't come just specially for us really to fly all the way, but they're coming for the daughter's graduation. Uh, Shama, who has been with uh, uh, Shama and uh, her sister are attending the KL church. And so because they are going to be here for the the daughter's graduation, they have uh, accepted our invitation to come preach for us on Sunday. So is that good? Hallelujah. I want you to pack it out. An anointing. I went to the church. It's not just a mega church, big church that is growing extensively. But I tell you, when I step into the church, there's a sense of revival. People, I mean, the, the people that were, you see, uh, uh, you see in some churches like, uh, what should I say? Have you seen African people, right? How they worship and all that. That's exactly what they do, all right? They will dance. The older women are the ones that will come out and dance, the younger girls as well. Everybody will just get up and dance. And they will celebrate. They are not shy and not, not ashamed, although most of them kind of are quiet, are, are, are more, not loud like the Americans. They are very polite and very, you know, very sweet. But as such wonderful, so well-dressed. And uh, most of all, it's that spirit of revival. When you step into the church, we can see like people coming out for the altar call were delivered of demonic uh, demons. And there were, there were all sorts of manifestation of God's presence in their church. People were just psh, falling under the power, not just the usual falling under the power. Somebody catch you, okay? This one, nobody ca- could catch them because they'll be like flying across the, the room and, uh, and they're not hurt, you know? It, it got to be supernatural for there are all sorts of manifestation that happens in their church and people are so hungry. People are showing up, turning up because uh, they're desperate for God. And God is so good raising this uh, couple up and, uh, 
and uh, the ministry that's across. So I don't want you to miss this next week. Huh? The husband, Pastor Colin, will be speaking for the KL Church, C3 KL. And then uh, the wife, Sarah, is going to be with, with me here in our Clang Church. Praise God! Yes, pray and expect great things. Bring people, okay? Uh, people with desperate needs or whatever it is, you need to bring them here because God's presence is going to be manifested in a great way this Sunday, uh, next Sunday. This Sunday as well, okay? Today, I'm preaching. Hallelujah. Praise God. Spiritual warfare. That's what I'm going to go on part two. Uh, and I feel in my spirit that this is a, uh, the, the, the line that God's pushing me to share about. And uh, God's teaching me and God's showing me things that I've not seen and, uh, before in the spirit realm, what is happening. And we all need to be aware, to be the people of discernment, to be aware of what's happening, not just in Malaysia, but around the world. The church of God is rising, but the enemy is as fierce and the battle is as intense as ever before. And I believe that the church, Christians should be should be uh, should be sensitive to what is happening, and uh, we not be sl in slumber, not be sleeping, and uh, not know that we are in an exciting time. That God is raising us up for this time, and you are privileged people that are happening, that's living in this most exciting time of history. And God is going to raise you up to do great and mighty things, because the glory of God is yet to be manifested in the fullest. Glory yet on earth, and you are the last day's generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of us, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm just excited what the, the possibilities of what God's going to do in this church and through our church. And our clan, not just a clan church, a KL church, where so many things that's happening, so excited, but I have to hold back eh, and not tell you everything. <laughs> yeah, but good news is about to come. We're going to share with you some good news. Like I said, every good news, there are battles to fight and uh, everything that is good that is not going to just drop down on your lap. You have to fight for it. That's why I uh, want to go on this uh, aspect of the teaching about spiritual warfare because you are going to fight together with us. Amen? Amen. Father God, we thank you. Let's raise... Right, just pray right now. Hallelujah. Across this room, I know that you are raising people up. You are touching people. You are speaking into their hearts and into their minds. And today will be the day of deliverance. Today will be a day of salvation. Today will be a day of change, a day of decision, a day of new beginning for them who decide to take the step of faith and step up to the level that you've called them to. Father, we thank you this church is going to be a prevailing church, a church that will have an influence in our community and in our nation. And we thank you for the works that you're already doing among us, but we believe the greater works are yet to come. Hallelujah. So prepare us, oh God. Our hearts are open, our hands, our feet, our lips, our hands. Uh, we give ourselves to you. This church will be a flagship church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, that we will continue to take new grounds. We continue to change our world one life at a time, you say. And we believe your word, oh God. We believe your prophetic word over our church and over our lives. We claim it right now. We pronounce it over C3 Clang. And today, thank you, Father, for the wonderful presence of your Holy Spirit here. And also thank you for the uh, Holy Spirit that you're about to do a great work in every one of our hearts. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, Amen. We're going to get into the Word. When you get into the Word, the Word of God's going to get into you. We need to get into the Word. So I'm going to do a bit of teaching, right? Huh? We, we talked about spiritual warfare. What spiritual warfare? Remember the last, I uh, don't know when, two weeks ago when we talked about spiritual warfare, and I said that all of us are in spiritual warfare. Whether you realize or not, we are in spiritual warfare. And the battle is real. And our enemy, the Satan, the devil, is real as well. You know, he would much rather that we ignore him and pretend that it's not there <laughs> and think that he will just go away if we just pretend he's not there. But he's not going to go away. He's here and he's, he's going to come with his weapons. Like I said, I've thought about what his weapon is of lies and deception. And we need not be afraid of the enemy because God has already equipped us and has already gotten the victory for us. 
And this battle that we are fighting, we're not fighting for the victory because we already have the victory. On, on the cross, Satan de- is already defeated and destroyed. His powers and authority have already been removed. And so we know we're going to fight this battle and we win. We win. It's already promised to us that we will win. So we are not afraid, but we need to understand, we need to be able to discern uh, the enemy and identify his strategies and that he's using against us and what is this battle that we're fighting about. Spiritual warfare is not coming together to just pray and bind every pull down demons in the heavenlies. It's more than in the heavenlies. I said that uh, it is in the mind. The battlefield is in between your ears, it's in your mind. Amen. A spiritual warfare is preaching the gospel. That is spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is renewing your mind. You want to win, you, 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 you know, you've got to renew your mind. I know the weapons that God has given to you, you're not, you cannot be ignorant. Okay, so we're going to fight this warfare. And right now, we're going to ask a question. What are we fighting for? Hmm. What's the purpose of our fight? I mean, if you don't know, you're just fighting and fighting, but you don't really know the purpose, the reason why you're fighting. Why are we fighting? We are fighting for territory. We are fighting for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, to move in to this natural world. That is a fight that we're going, it's a spiritual fight. And it will be manifested in a natural, as it is in a spirit. Ephesians 4 verse 27 says, the scripture says, do not give place to the devil. Do you know this scripture? Do not give place to the devil. The text really means that don't you give him your territory. That means don't give your territory to your enemy. What territory do we have? In order to have territory, you have to have ownership, right? Right? Now, many of us don't realize it, but God has given to us certain things that are under our authority that belongs to us that you must get prepared to fight for. You've got to fight for it. What do I mean by that? That means you've got to fight for anything that belongs to you, that God's given to you. What happens if someone does not know that they actually are owners? If you are ignorant and you don't perceive what you have, then the enemy is going to very easily deceive you and take what is yours. Now, look at what God said to Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8. Huh? He says what? See, they have been rounding the mountains in the wilderness on and on and on and on, and they're not going headed into the promised land that God has actually already promised them right at the start. And here is what God said to them. See, I have set the land before you. Go in. And possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to them and their descendants after them. So God's saying, now go in now. Go in and possess it. It's already yours. It's already given to you. But you have to fight to go in and fight and claim it. Come on. Do you know today, uh, we have got so much stuff that God has given to you that you don't even know yet. There are territories that God's given to us. There are bigger regions that God's, uh, ha, uh, that's beyond your wildest dream that God also has given to us, not just to the church, but to every one of us. And I'm not talking here about houses, not just about houses, property and land, which I believe we're beginning to claim for it. Huh? Do you know, church, we are praying for land. We are praying for land. Hey. Amen. We are praying for land and we are claiming it. We've been praying for, I mean, this few months, God's just been stirring in our heart to believe for land. (laughs) Supernatural God, you're going to give us land and we're praying for it. We're fighting for it and we know that something's going to happen. But it's not just the land as in uh, the physical aspect, but more than that, I'm talking about influence. I'm talking about effectiveness. I'm talking about your spiritual destiny that God has given to every single one of us. If you can just see the dreams that God has for you that's already within your reach or beyond even your reach, beyond your wildest dreams, really, in your office, what God's given to you, 
in your business, in your neighborhood, in your community. We are going to fight for our city, for our nation. Amen. Do you know, this is so important for us to realize that God has given already to us because God said to the children of Israel, I've given you the land, now go in and possess it. If God has given us a land to possess it, if you don't possess what's yours, let me tell you this, that the enemy will possess your land. What's yours? Because you fail to perceive what is yours and take hold of what is yours. Now, I remember, I just want to use this illustration to explain. I remember one time I was so discouraged at one point of my <laughs> uh, ministry, huh? I told pastor, I shouted and I said, I don't think I can take it anymore. I was that serious, okay? Usually I'm very positive, encouraging, and, but that period of time was my lowest of the lowest. I just shouted, I said, I don't care about you. I can't take it anymore. I'm going to quit. I'm going to stop. I'm going to not do it anymore. And you know what? <laughs> this time pastor is like very firmly, very in a nice way said to me, Sure. So now you're going to give up? After all that we've been through, after all that we've gone through, we're just going to give up? Throw in a towel and say, and hand it over to the devil and say, yeah, go ahead and have what's mine. The most annoying is that after saying that, after well, he went to sleep and he was snoring and sleeping while I was up whole night thinking, should, we, we should, should I go? Should I quit? Should I stay? Should I quit? Should I stay? The whole night I was battling with it. Now he just went to sleep and he snored and kept me awake. You know? But what he said makes sense. I didn't know that a fight in my life was a fight for the territory. I didn't realize that the attack that was coming against us was what God has given to us. And my discouragement was what? Of what was me handing the devil back? What was rightfully mine. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't, the devil doesn't even have to beat me up any really hard. He uses my discouragement to get me to hand him my territory. That's what he's gonna come, that's what he's gonna use against you. Huh? Discouragement, disillusionment, whatever, frustration. I, I'm gonna really zero on some really clear things that are Lord showing me. Uh, about some of the things that you are fighting in your life and you're going to identify those things and say, huh, I thought it was just something natural that has happened. No, 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 it was not something natural. So, church, don't sit back now and just let the enemy come and take your stuff, take your health, take your children, take your marriage, take your family, take your business, take your property, Take your future, whatever he's going to take from you, you are going to put up a fight. Amen. Amen. You are not just going to let him do whatever and take whatever he wants. You've got to recognize, first of all, that you are in a fight. And you need to get rid of this carnal mentality. You know, when I talk about carnality, it's not just about this, well, all these evil things. Can, to be carnal really is to be controlled by your five senses and that's what that's a problem with us christian is we are controlled by our five senses what we see what we hear what we feel what we smell and uh touch and the natural world is so real more real than a spiritual and so sometimes we're controlled with the natural instead of seeing beyond the natural and know that it's not just things happen <laughs> we just think that oh something happened well, it's just maybe a uh, natural thing. Everything has its source. Everything came from somewhere. And we didn't recognize that the thing that has come against you was sent by the enemy against you to bring you down. It doesn't matter what the doctor has to say. It doesn't matter what the economy, the country has to say, what the news say, what anybody else say. You need to know in your heart that the devil is a liar. Do you hear that? The devil is a liar. It doesn't matter what everything. The thing is, when we believe him, we just accept something. And it's normal. And then we just go along, adjust our way of life according to 
to accommodate whatever we think that uh, that's supposed to be a natural, but it's not natural. It's, we're never meant to adjust to come down to the level when God says He wants us to come up to His level. So stop accepting what's been thrown at you and say, oh, that is the way it's going to be and I'll just have to accept that I'm going to always be sick. I'm just going to accept that uh, the economy is bad, that my business is going to be bad, like everybody else says, their business is bad. You refuse to accept what everything, everybody or every media, what they're saying. Do you know what? You understand what I'm saying? Matthew 11 verse 12b, I love this. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Wow. Kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. And who are the violent? We have to take it by force. Like I said. So, fight for your territory. Church, fight for your family. Fight for your husband. Yes. Don't just allow another woman to try to seduce your husband. No way. I fight for my husband. Hallelujah. I fight for the marriage. Hey, he's the father of my girls. Nobody's ever going to try to seduce and take him. Let me tell you, there's some people just let it go. Just, oh, wow, that's too bad. You know, things, are, uh, things has happened. No, you've got to learn to fight. I may be a woman, but I can fight. Hi, ladies. <laughs> we can fight. We can scratch. We can claw. We can bite. We can kick. We fight like a girl. Not like you guys, huh? Maybe you got the strength to. <sighs> but we are called to. You may be an older man, but you can fight. Every one of us can fight. Amen. Amen. Tell you, your neighbor, I will fight. Hey, I will fight. <laughs> You didn't come this far to let the devil take your stuff. You are not going to let the devil take your stuff. I'm going to show preach from this passage of uh, this story in Luke chapter 8 verse 22 to 39. How are you going to fight for your territory? Okay? Now, verse 22 to 39. It's a long story. We won't we go verse by verse. Let's go to the first verse first, verse 22. Okay. Okay, verse 22 here. Can we put it up? I'll put up the whole passage anyway. Verse 22. Jesus said to his disciples this. Jesus said, let us cross over to the other side. That's what Jesus told the disciples. So they got in a boat and they launched out. Now, what Jesus was saying, was he just saying, okay, let's just go to the other side? I believe there's more than that, as you can see the progress of the story, huh? He said, let us, what he really wants to do was he, he wants to cross over to take new territories for the kingdom of God. That's what his plan, his plan was that you see in the verse, it says here. So, on verse 23, as they got in the boat and as they launched out into the sea, which is the Sea of Galilee, it was actually a lake, but the lake is so huge, they call it a sea. <laughs> uh, now, that's where we got that sea from, that when actually it's really a huge lake. And uh, look, verse 23 says that, but as they sail, Jesus fell asleep. It's such a huge lake, I'm telling you, to cross over is quite a distance. And he got so tight, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake. And they were filling the water and were in jeopardy. I want you to see that. That as they were crossing the lake, they were expanding the territory. Look, what happened? A storm appeared suddenly out of nowhere. It was a spiritual attack. It was a spiritual attack against Jesus and his disciples as they were crossing the lake because they were crossing and stepping into a territory. Uh, I'm going to show you as you begin to see how every time when you want to expand and you want to move forward, expect a spiritual attack that will come on you. Did you hear that? You are under attack for a reason. 
Realize that when you are attacked, there is a reason. As long as you're here, as long as the devil is dead, you're not leaving him alone. He's, he's not bothered. You're just staying. You're in your comfort zone. But the moment you say, I'm going to take new grounds. I'm going to change the world around me. I'm going to move forward. That's when all hell will break loose. Why? Because the enemy is going to attack you because you are taking territory. You are taking back your territory territory. He knows what you're capable of. He knows what God's put inside of you. And so, because of that, he recognized, so he's going to put up a storm. Huh. He's threatened. That's why he put up that storm to stop you, to hinder you in the same way. Have you stepped into something new? Have you tried to expand the kingdom of God as our church is? Do you know the church, whenever we want to take new grounds, when we want to expand, the enemy is not going to just sit back. The enemy is going to cause a strategic attack against the leaders, against those who are closest to us. That's why you need to pray for your pastor, eh? Huh? Because he knows that if you could, just as the storm came up to attack, Jesus and the disciples, because the disciples were traveling on a mission together with Jesus across the lake to expand the kingdom of God. You see, the devil is afraid. Recognize that the devil is very afraid of you. <laughs> and he's trying to attack you because you are attacking his kingdom of darkness and you are taking grounds from his kingdom of darkness and uh, uh, for the kingdom of light. So the enemy knows who you are. The enemy knows what you are capable of doing. The enemy knows what's inside of you. And he's going to attack you. How is he going to do that? By trying to mess up your life with you. He tried to mess you up so that you can't do what God's called you to do. I want you to think about this. What are some of the spiritual attacks that's coming against you that you don't even know? And today you're going to recognize those things are spiritual attacks from the enemy. Okay? How do you recognize whether it's a spiritual, whether you're under spiritual attack? You will feel like you're fighting this warfare or whatever, this battle that is ongoing. Like it's just on and on and on and on and on. Never ending. And you feel hindered, confined, restricted, unproductive. You're not making any progress in your life. Don't accept that. That's a spiritual attack against you. You feel like there is a force that's squeezing you slowly and choking the life out of you. That's a spiritual attack. You need to identify. Let me give you some of the symptoms of some kind of a spiritual attack that's coming against you that some of you don't even know it and recognize it today. Your eyes will be open and you're going to see it and you're not going to take it anymore. Okay, what's the first one? Physical and emotional exhaustion. And weariness. Huh. Anybody identify with that? Where you're physically so tired and emotionally just so drained? Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 says, The enemy would love to wear out the saints. That's his strategy to get you tired physically. So tired emotionally that you are so tired of doing all the good things that you've do, been doing. Well, you're feeling like, I'm so tired. Maybe I just, I, I just, Feel like quitting whatever you're doing. That's the enemy. Look at example, Jesus. Do you know, after his, during his baptism, he heard the voice of the Father, remember? That says, you are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Right after a great experience with God, what happened? He was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. See that? And even another, do you remember Elijah? He was out on Mount Carmel and just got a great victory against all the Baal prophets where God sent fire from heaven. Such a phenomenal miracle uh, of signs, demonstration of God's power. And what happened to Elijah right after that miracle, miraculous uh, manifestation of God? He got physically and emotionally drained and tired that the news of Ahab's wife coming to kill him got him so discouraged, he ran. <laughs> you, you know the story here how? And he prayed to God, God, please Lord, let me die. He's suicidal. Huh? This great prophet suddenly suicidal? 
He wants to die. God, please kill me. If you love me, kill me. Please take me home. I can't take it anymore. How many of us have said things like that? I can't take it anymore. God, just let me die. <laughs> now what did God do? God didn't rebuke him, scold him and said, get up you and serve. No. Do you know what God did? God sent an angel to cook food for him. Is that good? God knows that he's already exhausted and tired. He said, oh, go for another seminar. Another seminar will help you to get all work. No, he knows he's physically tired. And so cooked him a meal, can you imagine? And, say, and woke him up and said, get up, arise and eat. Imagine an angel cooking you a meal. Wow. And after, right after eating, he went back to sleep again. I tell you, if it was me, I'll be like, why awake? Huh? This angel cooked food for me? But he was so exhausted. And so he went back to sleep again. And what happened was when he woke up from the sleep, he went on a journey for 40 days in the strength of the angel's food. Wow. I don't know what food the angel cooked, I tell you. It must be so nourishing and nutritious. It lasted him 40 days of journey. So this incident shows us that, you know, the enemy will attack you sometimes right after a great victory. You're like, whoo, spiritually so high. But you can be like, shh, from high to low suddenly. Or you may be right at the verge of a breakthrough. Like you've been fighting and fighting, you're right at the verge of the breakthrough, right at the verge of a promotion, right at the verge of something, a great business has come through, and it got you so discouraged and so emotionally drained, and you say, ah, forget about it. I don't think I can do it anymore. See, look at his tactics, huh? That's one of the things that he will do to you. Did you get it? That's one. Second one, loss of desire for prayer, for the word, and for church. Huh? When you are under attack, you will lose your desire for reading the word of God, your intimate time that you spent with God. Hmm? You will find it really hard to focus and concentrate. Say, ah. Every time you try to read the Bible or you try to pray, what happens? Some distraction comes, work or something comes along to try to distract you. you know, first of all, you start missing church two, three weeks and you don't. You don't feel it anymore. Miss Church is so no big deal. Two, three weeks, so what? Huh? It doesn't bother you anymore. That's an attack of the enemy. He tries to draw you up away, all right? From the source of your life, which is God. Okay, now another one. Look at this. You start to be controlled by your old sins and habits. You've already been delivered of this when you accept the Christ, but like when you're under spiritual attack, all your old sins and all your old habits starts resurfacing again. Or wow, that's pulling you, tempting you to go back to your old sin again. You see, the old sin is a sign of the area of your weakness. The devil knows. He has been studying you. He knows where you are weak at. And so he's trying to bring it to you, especially when you're discouraged. That's a, a perfect soil for sin to grow because you're discouraged. Nothing is happening. <laughs> That is one way to see that you're under attack when you are going back to your old sin and your old habits. So discern that. Next one. You are drawing back from godly relationship. You're avoiding your Christian friends. Before you were under spiritual attack, you were so crazy about church. You're crazy about God. You're crazy about church. I tell you, when you see pastor, you say, Hi, Pastor Joe. Hi, Pastor Stella. And you introduce everybody. This is my pastor. Wow, so proud. Ooh, even I also get so shy. Huh? But now, when you see pastor, what do you do? Hi. <laughs> Quickly, hi. Go out. Huh? In case pastor asks you, Hey, what happened? You didn't come to church for the last one month? Oh, that's high. Don't. You try to avoid cell group leader calling you. What happened to you? You just avoid everybody and you make all the excuses and all that because why? You're avoiding godly because you're under conviction. Every time you come to church, you get convicted. So I'm not, I just don't want, don't want to come to church anymore. Every time I come to church, get one more, get one more. I feel so condemned. So you try to avoid, avoid church. Did you see that? Now, another thing, huh? You start to find your enjoyment and stimulation just from carnal means 
only means what? Now you go from one sale to another. You're going from one entertainment to another. You're going from one holiday to another. Wow, Air Asia every day also put up sales, sales. Only one minute left, one minute left. Come on, come on, buy. Yeah, go on a holiday, yes. Do you know, nothing wrong with going on a holiday. All of us should have a balanced life. It's not like work, church, work, church, work, church, and more church. That's not what God expects of us. God expects us to enjoy and to time for relax, to have fun with friends and family. Amen? To have a balanced life. We're not meant to be. Uh, but be careful when everything that, the energy that you get from is from all this entertainment that you get. You, you only feel alive when you have a party, when you had on a, a sale, or you are having a drink. Oh, you come alive. But you used to get alive just by the, from the Spirit. Just coming to church makes you so alive. Don't lose that. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened in your life. Don't get into the routine where you feel like, oh, hmm? Go to the wrong source for the satisfaction that you used to, you have when you're seeking God. Like I said, all of you need some entertainment, some relaxation and everything, but don't let that become your main source now. Beware, there's a spiritual attack of the enemy against you that you don't even know. Another thing, mm, this is a very clear one, huh? If you don't even know this is a spiritual attack, you need a thump on your head. Constant lack of resources. I think I mentioned it before. When you're under attack when your resources is drying up all at once, instantly. You know what I mean? Your car breaks down. Suddenly you have to pay a whole lot of repair. Then your aircon breaks down. It's not working. Then your washing machine breaks down. Then I say, your husband breaks down. Oh, that is bad. <laughs> then the maid ran away. Huh? Then the children all get sick at one time. Just going on and on and on, all happening on and on at the same time. Why? The enemy is trying to get you now to focus on your, how you're losing money, you're not enough money, and your uh, focus is now on the money, not on trusting God anymore. You see that? You're under spiritual attack. And you're worrying constantly about not enough money. Maybe I'll buy this. What do you call it? Four digit, huh? <laughs> Maybe I should try this, huh? Ah, there are a lot of people who are doing five, four, five, no, five, four disease. Whatever it is you're trying, let me tell you one thing uh, that's not a demonic attack. This is for all those who are holiday shoppers. You can't rebuke your credit card bills, okay, after your holiday and spend this whole lot of money and say, ah, I'm, I'm in trouble now. No, no. You have to pay all your bills for all your callousness and impulsive buying. Okay? Now, that's a spiritual attack. When suddenly you're circled by problems everywhere. is problem, problem, problem. And you seem like you have no way out. You can't get out. That's a spiritual attack. The devil wants to overwhelm you until you just give up and lose. Huh? Let down your defenses. So how do you fight in the spiritual warfare? How do we do it? Mm. You want to know that? Very clearly, let me give you, before I give you other things, the Word of God. Jesus fought the enemy with the Word of God. That's why you need to know the Word of God. Second most powerful weapon you have. The high praises of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The high praises of God. That's why praise is so important. The devil doesn't want you to praise. And a two-edged sword in your hand. Let me tell you, that's your weapon. But at the end of the day, always remember this. No matter how many things are surrounding you, that, that the enemy is waging against you, fighting against you, no matter what the enemy may bring against you, remember this. You are made to outlast the attacks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you build your life on the Word of God, that's why Matthew 7 verse 24 to 27 talks about the wise man and the foolish man. It says, therefore, whoever has these sayings of mine and does them, does the Word of God, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. 
and the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fall for you. Why? It was founded on a rock. See that? The wise man's house was built to outlast the rain, the storm, the wind, whatever. That's why God knew that, that you're going to have spiritual attacks. God knew beforehand that you're going to go through attacks. But if he, that's why He put the foundation in you, the Word of God. And when you begin to build your life on the rock of Jesus Christ and on His Word, you will outlast any storm, any wind, any flood that, that the enemy is sending against you. Right. Who come on the wise and the foolish, but the wise person knows what to do. Did you hear that? All right. Now, verse 24 here. Jesus, of course, you see in this story, what did Jesus do? When the attack came, the storm came, he was sleeping. And disciples got so all panicked and all saying, Jesus, don't you care about us? And they woke Jesus up. Of course, what did Jesus do? Jesus stood up and rebuked the wind. Ha! Jesus spoke to the wind. This is faith. I talk about the laws of faith. How important is it for you to open your mouth? You look silly. Talking to the wind, Jesus talked to the fig tree. Remember one time? He, he cursed the fig tree. He talked to the tree. Now he talked to the wind. He said, peace, be still. And the storm became calm. In the same way. You know, that's what the enemy wants to shake you out of peace, God's peace. God's peace is in you. He tries to shake you out of that peace to be in fear and to be in anxiety and worry. You have to speak to the whatever mountain, whatever wind, peace, be still. Grace, grace, grace. At one time, huh? in the Old Testament where the Bible, God told was that the prophet to speak to that uh, problem and say, grace, grace, grace. So you need to know how to use the power of your, your tongue. And speak to whatever situation. Speak to lack. <laughs> I'm separated from the lack of, uh, lack of money. I am joined to the blessing of Abraham. Begin to speak until you see the blessing of God being released into your life. Instead of speaking lack, lack, lack. Sickness, sickness, sickness. Tell 10 people all your sickness, how terrible it is. Are you going to tell your sickness, talk to your sickness, talk to your body and say, body, get well. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Who you are going to talk to? Talk to the problem. Speak to the problem and say, speak the word of God. And that's how Jesus calmed the storm. And then, you know what happened? They crossed the Sea of Galilee. Okay, let's see verse 26. What happened here? That this Jesus and disciples crossed the Sea of Galilee. And where did they land? At Gadarene, which is opposite Galilee. Okay, Gadarene. Do you know Gadarene? It was a place inhabited by Gentiles. How do I know that? Because these people were raising pigs. No Jew in, the, in Jesus' days ever raised pigs. You know, pigs is like, ooh, huh? unclean for them. But here you can see they're Gentiles. That's why they're, they're raising pigs. Now, I'm not sure Jesus, when he said, let's cross over, whether it was a geographical. I believe it was more than geographical. Oh, let's cross over to the other side. I believe Jesus was thinking of territorial, the different nationality that is across there, people, Gentiles who were there. He was more than crossing the region. He was crossing the cultures. Praise God. Every time you cross culture, every time we try to talk to somebody that is different from you, that's why I believe the devil hates all cultures coming together, people from different cultures coming together and worshipping God together and bowing and, you know, and the devil will stir people to get upset. Oh, why this church now so many Africans, huh? I have Christians who say things like that, you know, like, huh? Excuse me, where are you from? Oh, I don't like all these poor people coming to our church. Hey, where are you coming from? God loves all cultures. <laughs> Our church should reflect what heaven's going to be where all cultures coming together. Yeah? You know, of course, if 
they are Tamil speaking, they can't understand English, then of course they have to have the Tamil service. Like, you know, there's no uh, reason to force them to attend an English service where they don't. But I believe that every church, our church, C3 Church, hey, hallelujah, will be a church that will attract all cultures coming in. I'm so excited. I love the Africans so much. I don't know. I think uh, that's uh, uh, so much about different cultures with their different flavors and a different uh, unique uh, ways. So we, we should embrace everybody. And God may be putting you, asking you to cross the re your region that you're very comfortable with and cross over to somebody that's of a different culture and befriend them. Will you do that? Jesus went across just for one guy. One guy. Look at that. Just one person. Because he knows that guy is so significant, that person is going to turn history. This man, Jesus went all the way just to talk to a woman by the well, a prostitute or maybe a loose, not prostitute really, she's a loose woman immoral women just to speak to that one woman and that one woman turned the city upside down because of her lifestyle that she, when she became a christian people knew ah that woman we know she's changed what happened you see god may be sending you to speak to somebody that's totally messed up with in terms of the eyes of the world is hopeless is condemned i just recently somebody sent me a uh, video, I don't know if you got it about this pastor who went back to his village to preach the gospel, no, did you get that? I, I was so tempted to actually show that video and um, he went back to his hometown, he was from pastoring in a city church and he went back to his hometown, which is a village and that whole village that has missionary, western missionary, tried to infiltrate in, has no results but the moment he stepped in, in obedience to God you know what happened? <laughs> Scores of people started getting saved. But the most amazing that really touches me was this woman that was mad, huh? was demon-possessed and mad, so similar to the story that I'm going to relate to. And she was like mad, talking to herself, doing crazy things and sometimes walk around naked. And the, 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 the people around, would, children were used to laugh at her, throw stones at her, and she got saved. And she was delivered of those demons. And God raised her up to be an evangelist and she started bringing, going from village to village, sharing the gospel. And people, hundreds of people got saved. And you see that lady that is now clothed and in sound mind as a cell leader. <laughs> Leading people in songs and worship and preaching the, preaching the gospel and teaching the word of God. Look at that. When I saw that, wow, wow. Exactly what's happening in Jesus' days. Just one person, Jesus went all the way for that one person that turned history. Look at this man. Let's look at this man. This guy. What about this guy? Verse 27. Jesus stepped on the land and there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. He wore no clothes. He was naked. Neither did he live in a house, but in the tombs, in the caves. And what, what else? He was bound by chains and shackles, all right? And, uh, but he was so, I mean, the demons in him was tormenting him. And he was definitely very smelly or very stinky and, you know, mad, totally mad. And uh, uh, no, nobody would have anything to do with him. He was living in a cave, in a tomb. He was, used to cut himself because of the torment. He was cutting himself. The demons make him, tormented him so much, he cut himself up. You know, this poor man, for so long he was tormented by the devil until Jesus stepped on the land <laughs> and changed his life. Changed his life. Right? Can you identify with this demonic man? Demoniac, we call that. Maybe you may not be demon-possessed. Maybe you are not like out of your mind like this man is like gone mad. But you may be bound and oppressed by the devil. You have habits that are still holding on to you. You are living in the tombs. You're hiding. You don't want people to get near you because you don't want people to know what you are like inside. You are bound and you're cutting yourself up, not maybe physically, but you're cutting yourself with words like, I'll never be happy. I will never get away from this torment. 
this pain that is inside of me. No one will ever love me because I'm so messed up inside. If they knew what was inside of me, they'll never love me. Inside of you, you're just saying, life is not fair. Why do I have to go through all this pain and torment? You could be bound to with all these feelings that are overwhelming you, exactly like the demonic man. For so long, the devil enjoyed tormenting him. Wow. Tormenting him until Jesus stepped on the land. What happened? What happened when Jesus stepped on them? He ran towards Jesus. <laughs> and we know that Jesus cast the demon out, right? Verse 29 and 30. Come, let's look at verse 29. <clears throat> Jesus commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man. <clears throat> And Jesus asked, saying, what is your name? And demons inside say, legions. Listen, look here, huh? Legions. Because many demons have entered him. The word legion. Not just one demon, you know, here. Here is a legion. You know what's a legion? A legion is used in the New Testament to refer to a division of Roman soldiers or army. It's a big group. So here, what is... Uh, what it means, it mean, uh, there's a whole big number or multitude of demons that were possessing this man. Wow. And the legion also speaks of what? Organization. Like the Roman soldiers, they were organized. They was, had structure. They had order. They were skilled, trained men who marched together. I want you to know that the, demon, the demons that are released to, today to try to attack us, are, yes, we are not saying that they are so powerful. I don't want to magnify the devil and think they are so powerful. But they are organized. They wait. They let you off sometimes. They wait until you are up there. huh? Then expose your sin. Hmm. There are legions that are sent against men of God, women of God, every child of God. The structure, know that. But Jesus cast them out. <laughs> and I want you to also know this. When you, that you're fighting, yes, it, it may not be, a, it, this is not a chaotic, this uh, uh, force that you are coming against. The devil is, is a strategic force, task force. I told you, <laughs> there are different levels even in a demonic kingdom. Do you know that? That's sending against you. Now, these demons are sent against you to bring you down. Don't be foolish. Don't think you can play with fire, play with sin and get away with it. The devil, the demon knows. Huh? Your weak spot. He knows how to take you down. How when you least expect it. But do you know what? Jesus cast them out. Jesus cast a whole lot of demons out. And they went into the herd of pigs. And what happened to the pigs? They all... Committed suicide. <laughs> they all ran across and the cliff and jumped into the water. That's not normal, right? Have you ever seen pigs all running across and diving into pools and diving into uh, the sea and have a nice swim? No. These demons were so vexed. Imagine these demons went into the pig. The pig couldn't control themselves, had to commit suicide. Just think about this. These men... Huh, has endured the torment for such a long time. He could have committed suicide, right? Like all the pigs, the herd of pigs. This man endured the legions that have tormented him for so long. Ha, he must be a tough guy eh, to survive all this. The things that you've gone through, I've seen, I've heard, sometimes I hear amazing how people have gone through. They've gone through rape gone through molestation or they've gone through abandonment by their parents. They've gone through all sorts of neglect as a child. They could have died very early, but God kept them. They survived. And it could be you. You could be one of them. And God said, I, my hand was upon you. You could have died in, an accident, in that accident. You could have died in that drug overdose. You could have died in that depression and committed suicide, but you are alive today, just like that man. He was alive because he survived, and Jesus came to set him free. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. But look, how did he get free? Look, here is the answer. Do you want to be free? Or do you want to continue to hide in a cave, in a tomb, and pretend that everything is okay, where the demons were tormenting you day and night, causing you so much of pain in your life? Or are you going to, uh, to be set free today? Look, what happened? When he saw Jesus, he ran towards Jesus, and he bowed down and worshipped Jesus. That's the answer to your deliverance today. Are you going to sit there or stand there looking very sophisticated because you don't want to appear foolish if you're going to cry out to God? Or are you going to be like the man hmm, that was bound but he's got so tired of the years of bondage when he saw Jesus coming, he shouted, he opened his mouth, you know, and cried out, Jesus, Son of God. And of course, the demons took over and started trying to control him. He cried out to Jesus to be set free. Today, you can be set free. Today is a day of deliverance. Amen. Today can be a day of transformation. Today is a decision that you're going to make that's going to change you, and you're going to be a, all uh, that God wants you to be. No more bound. No more oppressed of the devil. There are people, Christians, I know of Christians that continue to struggle all their life because they don't know there's the deliverance that God has prepared for you that you need not struggle. You need not be bound anymore. Today, there's an anointing that's going to be released today. I pray for you. I know that there are people who have, have, have got habits or whatever bondages, emotional things that are bound that they're of the past that the enemy has hold, held you captive for so long. But today is the day that you're going to see deliverance. If you open your mouth and worship God, worship aloud. He didn't just worship silently. He cried out aloud. He worshiped aloud. That's what we need to do. Shout out, uh, shout aloud. If you want a deliverance, okay, you got to open your mouth because out of the heart comes the issues. Whatever bad issues that you have needs to come out. The demons have to come out. You have to open your mouth and shout and I call Jesus. Let me close with this. 33, 34, 35. The herd people, the herdsmen who saw the uh, demons being cast out and <clears throat> the pigs all committed suicide and jumped over the lift, uh, the lift, uh, the cliff. They were so shocked. They went right to the city and they called everybody from the whole city came out to see Jesus and the demonic man totally healed and a sound mind beside Jesus. For the first time, the Gentiles heard the gospel. The first time they saw and witnessed a miracle. First time. But they were so afraid, huh? So what did they do? Jesus, please, go away, go away. Don't disturb us. They were so afraid. <laughs> they thought, what, Jesus, what else is Jesus going to do? And what? Jesus started leaving. And the man that was healed and demon uh, delivered, ran to Jesus and said, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to go with you. But did Jesus, did Jesus take him along? Jesus said, no. You stay in this territory. Why? Because God needed him. I want you to go share the gospel with your loved ones, with people who are in this town, in this city. You, Jesus wouldn't allow that man to follow him. Why? Because Jesus needed him to reach out to his territory. Jesus is leaving him behind so that he can take over the territory that Jesus has already set in motion. Put the man there and given him a specific assignment to the territory, that area of influence. In the same way, church, and God saved you, God gave you an assignment. I'm speaking to some of you here. We are saved, you are cleansed, you are, you are clean now, you are free. God has an assignment for you that you forgot. He didn't just save you so that you can be happy on your way to heaven. You had an assignment to touch people, to heal people, to bless people, to change lives, to change and take over the territory. You have a territory that you have given up, back and handed up because you refuse to fight. God's calling you too. God's calling you, every single one of us and say, what are you going to do with the assignment that I've given to you, just I've given to that man. <laughs> this month, the, uh, this afternoon, we're going to fight. Amen? Are we going to fight? <clears throat> I'm telling you, we're going to fight. We're going to fight for our marriage. 
We're not just going to give up. Ah, there's nothing I can do. Lah. My husband's always going to be the same. My wife's going to be the same. We all just accept. That's my portion of life. No, we're going to fight for our marriage. We're going to fight for our families. We're going to fight for our business. Whatever God's given to you. There are more regions. There are more territories that God has for you. You've got to fight. You've got to have the uh, perseverance to fight and to claim. S- studies. Don't give up. God has called you to study. You go study. You fulfill God's vision for you to be the best, whatever you are in. Don't ever give up. Whatever God's given to you, what territory has God given to you? I want today, in Jesus' name, the anointing of God is here. Amen? We're going to, as we worship God, I want you to worship God with all your heart. Now, the worship is fantastic. Not just the people here. I want to see you worship. God wants to see you worship. Will you do that as you stand with me together? Let's begin to worship God together. Satan doesn't mind you coming to church. Uh, we are every Sunday we come to church. We sit in our pews, sit in our chair and, and spectate. That's not what you're going to do today. Starting today, you say, every time I come to the house of God, Every time when I'm out there, whatever it is that's trying to make me feel tired, weary, discouraged, negative, huh? I'm going to worship God because that's the two-edged sword in your mouth that's going to come out to fight them. Praise is so powerful. I don't know if you understand. Praise is so powerful. Everybody up here, everybody down there, I want you to begin to praise the Lord. We're going to sing and we're going to praise because I believe as you dare to praise, You dare to worship, I dare you, church. Dare to worship and you dare to praise as you worship God. Something is going to happen because just as the demonic person that is broken, that anointing of God broke that uh, bondage, the bondages that's over your life, the oppression of the enemy that's over, the burdens that are over your life, that today God said, enough. I want to break those bondages so, so that you can be free to be the person that God called you to be. Hallelujah. So are you ready to praise and worship God with all your heart and say, yes, God, I'm going to praise. Depression will have to go. Huh? Anxiety will have to go. Sickness will have to go. Discouragement will have to go. Hallelujah. Strongholds of the mind will have to go. Torment have to go. Every pain in my heart will have to go because Jesus is going to be Lord of my life. I'm going to worship Him and throne Him in my praise. That's what we're going to do. Are you going to worship God with me? As we're going to worship, what we're going to sing that worship song. Hallelujah. The last song, is it? Greatest. Huh? Greatest. Okay. I want everybody to worship. Before I make an altar call for people to come forward, I believe very strongly, let's worship God. We are right here in the house of God. This is a house of God. And the presence of God is so powerful here. And the anointing is so powerful here because I know I preach the word there's power in the word of God something is going to happen you're not going to just ritually attend church and see no change in your life in your family and you're sick that the things are happening that's bound you for so long and you're tired of fighting the same problems and same issues you start worshipping the Lord hallelujah demons will have to leave your home demons will have to leave your business demons will have to leave your office Demons will have to flee as you worship God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody worshiping together. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, worship Jesus, hallelujah. 
I'm talking and as I'm preaching, you know that God's speaking to you. There are areas in your life that needs to be delivered. I want you to come right now, right now, where the anointing is, the presence of God is here. That's where you're going to see the del- deliverance of your of all. Not, do not be ashamed. But like the man, cry out to Jesus. Come and cry out to God. And today you will find a difference. I want you to come out right now, okay? You need prayer for your family, for your finances, for your body, whatever it is that you are uh, facing, that you are struggling with. Today is the day. I'll come right to the front and say, yes, God, I want to be set free today. No more am I going to be bound. Amen? That's right. Hallelujah. As you come forward, I'm going to lay hands on you in Jesus' name and pray for you as the musicians and singers and the rest of you pray and worship God with all your heart. Hallelujah. As we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Strongholds are going to come down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Strongholds are going to come down in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come cry. Raise your hands. All those people in front. Worship Jesus together. Worship with all your heart. Worship. Worship God. Hallelujah. Cry out to Jesus. Cry out to God. Hallelujah. God set me free in the name of Jesus. Set me free in the name of Jesus. Oh shada ba 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 ya kara ba ya dara ba ya ta. Oh ya kara ba shikiri ya dara ba sheket. You need to come forward. You got to come forward. If God's speaking to you, you come right forward right now. Don't wait. Don't delay because this is your day. This is your moment. Come out in humility. Say, God, I need a deliverance today. Today. I want to be free. Hallelujah. Rabba shekara bariya dala mashanda. Oh, rabba karaba kia taraba ya terere diyanda. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, today people who are bound going to be set free. Hallelujah. From pain and torment and from every agony in the name of Jesus. The supernatural anointing of God is here to break yokes and to remove burdens that's over your heart and over your life. Are you ready? Raise your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. I'm going to come and pray and, and anoint you, release the anointing over your life and over 